Okay, so I'm on. Hi. So I didn't expect to be back on, you know, I guess camera or back on just in general. Um, but I wanted to get here and talk a little bit. It is Sunday the 9th, so it's like 9 9 18, and you know, I try not to do any work on Sundays. And that's really helpful because I enjoy working, but I get stressed about everything. I think I've gotten better at things, but I haven't reached that point of perfection where I'm just very relaxed and very... Um, I guess very relaxed about my scheduling and timing and things like that. I always kind of hold my breath or get anxious about finishing one thing, even by the hour, you know, and then what needs to happen after that, what needs to happen after that. So I've been concentrating on being relaxed within like my work days and going into like this, um, Friday, I mean this Monday, um, I always look at every week as like, you know, just another shot to do better and get more organized. And I recently purchased a journal, not a journal, a planner. It, you know, I've tried using just like notebooks for planners like making every point myself I tried bullet journaling or I guess it's bullet journaling but that's like a different thing even though I like all the drawing and designs and stuff that people tend to do with those things but it doesn't work for me I've tried digital planners those don't work for me either I can't really I haven't found one that really mimics a paper planner um, very well, you know, and I like to be able to make notes quickly and, you know, if your phone is charging or if something's happening, you, it's like, it's not as fast. I used to think that going completely digital was like necessary, you know, to like keep up with modern times and the future and things like that, because you know so many things have become digital but now I'm seeing like not everything is better when it's digital and that's pretty cool I was thinking about like letter writing the other day and how nothing beats like paper you know um for a lot of things but not just a letter being written so that was just something, those types of things I think about. I still really enjoy journaling and having like something that is designated to be written in. So not just for like sketching, I like it for writing as well. Like I'm particular about the journal that I keep. Like right now I've designated a new one, kind of. Um, I haven't been journaling as much but this is my new journal mainly because it has the types of pages that really can't be torn out very well and so I figured okay because I like taking notes I like doing all that kind of thing you know but this ultimately is is too small of a journal for me um, it works but I prefer a different style but I had this one and I like the outside so and I definitely wanted to find a use for it I was going to put the story that I'm writing or the story that I'm working on in this but it didn't work out too well and it also didn't work out well in a plain like subject notebook like you know um, like I guess you can call it college rule subject notebook Um, but 
I've noticed that the notes for the comic work best in the same area that I'm making the sketch the sketches for it. Um, it will be digital, but what I'm noticing is that um, the paper version is helpful. So digitally going into this week, I have some goals. Um, I have a few techniques that I've been wanting to work on and I have a couple of ideas for like um, a couple of logos and stuff that I've been um, kind of rolling around in my head. You know, it's like I had dreams about logos and stuff and a couple of like techniques that would be for software like came up and that was pretty cool because I can't remember ever dreaming about you know an illustrator or Photoshop technique and then really I mean first of all I've never I don't think I've ever dreamt about that but then um, I don't think you know I've really had artistic dreams where I'm thinking I could really like use that you know I had a dream last night about working out I was in a gym and there weren't many people in it and it was a little bit crowded like as far as like equipment like the equipment I remember being really big and something like I had never seen before and I just remember like it being like one of my first workouts and then like I just got really into it you know and I used to work out a lot like in a gym like I've always been in gyms you know like um from when I was an athlete in middle school and high school and college but then it just continued in college even after everything was finished that I would just spend a lot of time in the gym and then when I graduated from school I always made sure to find like you know somewhere to take Pilates or yoga um, but I, and then I would always be working out like um, just on machines and weights and th stuff like that so I had this dream where it was like I'm back in the gym and I remember there were like people there was one person who was there when I was working out and you know then later it seemed like I was looking for the same person which is a very interesting dream so but back to the logo thing um, I had you know dreams about certain techniques so those techniques I'm going to um, I guess implement into my work for this week um, which should be pretty exciting um, and as far as like gaming is concerned I guess there's always like a gaming update because I do game a lot um, I started over I started all of the games pretty much almost how do I put this I started a few games over again on my handheld consoles my PSP my 3DS and I don't think on my DS, but I think I started a couple of games like over maybe two separate games on one of the consoles. And that was really interesting. Um, it wasn't something that was, you know, unusual because I had started Skyrim over and I was 450 hours in on Skyrim when I started it over so the other games I was like I think one of them was at 30 hours so it didn't make that much of a difference even starting Skyrim over I think the biggest part is is that with starting Skyrim over it wasn't a big deal at all with those types of hours so when it came to the other ones I had already had the experience of doing something similar with something with way more hours so I was like you know it's no big deal so 
I, you know, speaking of games, I guess what I will say is that um, I used to have a couple of ideas for um, games, um, video games, and since, I guess like, since starting like the program with um, video game design and development, um, I've just noticed that my the game that I had in mind um, wasn't really unique enough for me to want to I guess pursue um, I found that there were a few elements in it that were just I don't know I won't speak on that there, there's a game, there's a franchise that I play, and I found that there were some similarities between my game and that game to a degree where I kind of lost interest in making this game because it just didn't seem like something I wanted to put time towards. But it seems like I'm having another idea for a game. And what's good is that part of my program now is um, creative writing. And so it, it seems as if one of my projects um, has a pretty good story foundation, which I'll just leave at that. But it seems very... Um, it's intriguing to think of like the possibilities for a story that is strong so um, yeah it's kind of hard to talk about stuff when you have to speak about it so vaguely you know but with artistic endeavors I've found that mum is kind of the word in some regards, at least very, very early into the project. You know, like I'm talking about like super foundational stages. So yeah, but um, otherwise everything seems to be on the up and up and didn't really have too much to talk about today. I see it's like a, a shorter video. It's like cameras, man. Cameras. <laughs> it's like from back here. It's like cool. You start getting really close. Stuff starts getting wonky. But maybe it's just me. But anyway, I'm going to carry on. Um. It is, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but it is sumo season. So um, I think right now, I think the tournament now for fall is called Aki Basho, but I'm not really sure what Basho translates to as far as sumo. I won't really talk about that so much. Aki, from what I understand, is autumn. But I'm not sure if that's like the everyday term, but from what I'm understanding about sumo so far is that it runs every season. And right now it's considered fall, which is very cool. I was shocked. I wasn't thinking that the, the fall tournament would start for like another month or so. I was really excited to see like it had come. I didn't realize it had been so long since the last one. Sumo has become I don't even know if I can call it my favorite sport, but it's definitely up there with one of the t absolute top sports of mine of all time. Like, it's really good. I highly suggest anybody following sumo. So, and today the Steelers play. I lost kind of some hope in the NFL and the NBA. But if there's two teams that I pay attention to, it's gonna be the Steelers and the Pirates. 
even though I want to kick the pirates right in their ass right now. I just get so pissed off, but I gotta be cool. You know, that's just how it goes. I'm just having a harder time this season with the pirates, you know? I, I'm just super sensitive because I'm also a Bills fan, and I know I'm skipping around sports. But when the Bills had losing seasons for like a lot of years, I could deal. You know, I could deal, and I was still like a devout fan with the with with the pirates I'm just angry and I don't understand why I just can't be like a loving fan like oh it's okay it's not okay <laughs> I'm mad mad to a point where I'm like fuck baseball <laughs> like and watching other teams is it's okay you know it's like I'm I'm starting to find who where my allegiance lies wheartedly you know it's like I've always been at least a pseudo Dodgers fan at least a pseudo Red Sox fan I like the Raiders to, well I'm going to like a different area and different sport but um, I liked I didn't like the Oakland days so much but I was mentioning the Raiders because it was uh, gonna be my reference to a team who I liked for the wrong reasons even though I'm in the wrong sport so I can't think of anybody in baseball that has the same thing but basically the Raiders when they were in Oakland made me think of NWA <laughs> so but I'm, I'm kind of all over the place right now um you know Oakland A's I mean that's cool N neutral on that um, Yankees just put them in the same pot, pot as the Patriots for sure and and throw Dallas in there too the Cowboys but um, I can't think of another baseball team that would be in that pot and as far as basketball I really don't have any basketball team that fits into any of those with the N with NBA like I'm cool pretty much there isn't any team that I just can't stand there are teams that I like more than others like I'm I've always been a Celtics fan I'll always be a Bulls fan um the Hawks are cool because I live in you know I lived in Atlanta so I think there is an affinity for Atlanta teams. Um, the Braves are in there too. So, but the Braves are actually really good. So now I'm watching the Braves. Like, you know, I've never really been a big fan of theirs, even though being a pseudo fan has made me appreciate them when they play. Because I've been having a hard time really figuring out which baseball teams I'm rooting for like wholeheartedly and you know with me just being pissed at the pirates it's rough you know like the dodgers are cool but no one's like that cool you know and then you just have the yankees that come in and they just piss me off Ma baseball makes me mad man it makes me mad <laughs> so, i don't know what to do ah i don't know what to do Ah, <sighs> fucking baseball, man. I mean, it's not that bad. Like, I still wa enjoy watching, you know, and... Hmm. We'll get to all that rest of this stuff later. But anyway, um, the Steelers are playing today. Don't even know if they finished playing. Um, yeah, I've been watching the preseason for the NFL, and that's been cool. But I'm kind of irritated at the NFL because these dudes, I think these dances just should be almost outlawed. Like some of them can be funny sometimes, but some of these dudes start doing dances for like hardly doing anything. And don't even, you know, talk about like if they lose, you know, it just, and they spend so much time with these orchestrated dances that look like, like K-pop, like choreography you know like I'm not even joking it gets to being like that 
obnoxious. I'm not saying K-pop is obnoxious, but when a dude in the NFL is doing some routine that's like 30 seconds in and you know there's our movements like a fucking traffic director it's like what are you doing man but i've been irritated at the nfl and the nba since they had their lockouts some years ago so i'm still a little bit sensitive i thought i was going to be over it by now i really did but haven't gotten over it so we'll see gosh is this going to be like a sports commentary channel like i'm, I'm over here watching stuff from the US Open still and it's just like out of control oh we won't even get started on politics because politics is going through the same antics as athletics is it's like what's going on in the states man it's like baby land it's like drama drama time you know it's like I feel like I'm watching some political drama and not yeah. even like you know what was it um oh gosh scandal like it's not even like scandal or house of cards or i don't even watch those anymore like i don't watch anything like that anymore really like all those american dramas just the uh, the acting style is just all the same all the time and the storylines just seem to all be cut from the same cloth and there's not a lot of humor so it's just like this like production that is taking itself like super seriously you know and to look like everything else you know and then like you know they go into like other kind of genres that are just totally not my style i will say though game of thrones is like exactly my style so i watch game of thrones over and over and over again um you know, I stopped it for a minute to watch this Japanese drama, which is really cool. Um, what was called La Cinderella. So I like that kind of thing a lot. Um, the last American drama that I watched was The Good Doctor. It was about um, a younger guy who's autistic who got a chance to practice as a doctor even though he has autism and to a degree where he doesn't communicate well so it was pretty good it's just the way that these stories are delivered sometimes it's like they have a graph or a diagram yeah they have like a diagram for like every episode and it seems like every episode has that same map that they have to follow and i guess that's the same for like a lot of shows but i think what it is is that at least with american actors my eyes are getting american productions actors in american american actors and american productions i'm not even sure because i see the same formula like in the japanese drama that i watched i see it in korean dramas i see it like i see actors kind of acting the same and things kind of like looking the same um you know for a lot of things like american movies for like the past like seven years or so have all pretty much looked the same um and actors have been taking like the same approach you know like back in the day you saw like a lot of variety you know like the quick and the dead and um the italian job and um titanic um you go back further platoon and goodfellas um you know and then it just turned into like a whole bunch of marvel and like the Batman series, that was real cool, but that seems a little bit creepy, you know, because some crazy stuff like the Exorcist set, some weird stuff goes on, I think, you know, so it's a little creepy over there. But the same thing with TV, everything just started feeling like Law and Order, you know, um, Scandal kind of changed things a little bit. It seemed to be funny and interesting, but it seemed to be like the same stamp. And I can't figure out why, you know, I say the American thing because it's maybe it's because I'm so used to seeing American actors and American acting styles. And I watch these things because I've always been very interested in that industry. Like, 
I really thought I was going to be a director. I really thought I was going to be a writer. You know, I always felt like I needed to write something. I always felt like I needed to direct and act. And, you know, that's why for a lot of years I just, I didn't do any art because I was, you know, shooting a documentary that went on for a couple years and it was, I think, really good. And, you know, I was studying film. All I did was watch movies and watch dramas. That's when I first learned about, um, Korean dramas and because I would rent them from my library I'd watch the uh, Criterion collection and I would watch these dramas like they had like the full sets and of the DVDs and I was like what is this you know and it was very cool so I like watching these things it's just with network TV here in the States like I think maybe maybe because I live here I don't know but one thing that has changed what I like is Game of Thrones like everything about that I like to a degree like I see a couple of things that go into that Hollywood standard and I'm kind of like uh. but for the most part you know I like watching all the seasons because I've been able to see the way the characters change um, even surgeries and different things that people did to their faces and their bodies throughout the episodes what things they cleaned up like in the very first season you saw food around but then as the seasons went on you, they didn't put food on the sets anymore um in the scenes and even like the glassware they used to have like a certain kind of glassware in the first couple seasons and then you saw how that changed and then the hairstyles changed and the uh, wardrobe and then the production value just went up and then it just really got good and then you saw the way and this isn't to insult people's surgeries and stuff but you saw the way the actors faces changes change because if you watch season um what is it seven or eight you see something right but then when you start over and you go back to one People look completely different, you know, like not completely different, but you can see like the real subtle things that happen and it's really, really good, you know, work. And I, and I mean that as somebody who enjoys this type of thing, you know, people are aging um, and the seasons go on, but they really can't look that different. But then they also turn out to be better looking as time goes on. And you see the way people's faces start to sharpen, but you know, whoever's doing the procedures really can't do too much work too often, you know, and they can't mess up. So they're dealing with like really high profile um, surgeons and high profile, I guess, whoever does injections and stuff like that. And this isn't to rag them because what I've noticed is that when you're at that, when you're at like a certain level, you know it's almost expected that your face looks chiseled in a certain way um for symmetrical reasons and camera reasons you know especially when you're trying to have like a cohesive look in a production so i don't see it i just see it as part of the job um i like watching surgery stuff like i like watching surgical procedures and before and afters and people who like document their journeys like on YouTube and stuff even if it's just like somebody who's like 22 and wants a boob job or you know something like that you don't see too many older people documenting stuff you see a lot of like the younger generation documenting things and it's really interesting the doctors YouTube channels tend to be a little bit too cut and dry you don't see people healing they don't want to show people in, like in pain and stuff um but i like seeing like the healing part of things um i like seeing people take the flight i like seeing them get used to like the area that they're in and you know how they document the days like after their surgery and then they have like six months post-op i think it's really interesting because i mean it's medical but it's also like beauty but it's also um yeah it's like and then it's like art kind of because you know people who do bad work I've seen those videos too and it's just like man you know just a lot so 
back to Game of Thrones. Oh, some music in like season seven and eight. I think it's seven and eight because nine is coming up. Like they really got hardcore about like how awesome the music was. Like when Cersei, I can't even, is this going to be like a spoiler alert? But when Cersei blew up the sept, that very first like montage of like when people are going to the sept for her trial and they just had like this music montage when the king and her were getting dressed and um queen marjorie was getting dressed and it was just great and then it was just like fucking destruction like and the clothes like they i'm i, I know i'm like on their dick for sure like that's not cool but it's just a really good production and i feel like it runs the same course as the way that movies could could be and used to be movies haven't had this like kind of beauty in them and if they do have a beauty in them it just tends to maybe it's more obvious nowadays but it has this like bizarre kind of undertone to it almost like creepy and it's like what are you up to you know i don't know i don't know hollywood just I have a very love-hate relationship or love, I have a very black, not black and white, not gray, not love-hate, but I have a very like back and forth relationship when it comes to like Hollywood and media and music and oh, I don't even get started on publications like magazines and stuff like it's like I like that whole realm you know but then I don't because a lot of times it's turned into like nonsense and then if we get back to politics how you know pol politicians are sent you know following the same equation as Hollywood and I guess it's always been like that because if you think back to like all the presidents like there's always been something even to like big degrees I just kind of like as an artist like I look at people who would want to just be an actor and you know want to go just do a good production or writers that just want to write something and it seems like you know the part of it that I'm not so cool with is when cats just start getting in the way you know um well you want you want this you got to work with us to get that kind of backing and once you start working with us then it's hardly about anything anymore and maybe that's where that normalcy about the surgeries comes in because you know it's it's in the music industry too you see it everywhere you see it all over like people aren't allowed to be natural you know they have to they've they've taken the look of the performers to a point where a lot of the girls just look like high price call girls you know everybody's on naked on stage you know squatting with their legs wide open tits just out half their ass cheeks just out you know what i'm saying shaking their ass i'm like you know you're doing exactly what girls do like when they're strippers or you know you're wearing the same you're wearing less than a hooker wears and that's all cool you know but what i'm saying is that it's a weird thing. You see the same thing in K-pop. You see it all over the world. Like K-pop is extreme because it's almost like in Korea, you don't see people, you don't see girls like, it's like a conservative place. But that conservative nature is thrown right out the window as soon as a girl hits the stage. And then they're bent over, you know, with everything just out acting whatever and it's okay because you're a performer and that's where things kind of get a little shady for me because it happens here like of course you know it's like what what's going to be next people are performing in pretty much bathing suits right now but bathing suits and bikinis with 40 inch wigs and 40 inch weaves where do you go from now you know from here like what happens next and you don't see many dudes in like speedos you know what i'm saying like the 
it's not quite equal. You have people who are significantly overweight with their bellies just out and they're like famous and okay or you see some other guy who's like you know malnourished and it's like okay but then all the women have to have like a certain cup size, a certain waist size, a certain ass size and they have to show like everything you know what I'm saying and you see girls like dressing like that now like it's it's gone to a point of craziness and you know I'm just like you're a, I mean ultimately like a high priced call girl you know on stage and they call you a performer um, and it's become like the status quo like that you have to dress this way and dance this way and it's like I don't I don't I don't know you know and then they're like well I'm a performer or whatever like it just seems like um, an easy excuse to get girls to show everything and I say girls because it is lopsided you don't see dudes wearing stuff that shows the, out, the outline of their dicks you know what I'm saying like you see some dudes taking off their tops or whatever but like what women show versus what men show is completely lopsided and I'm not saying that I want to see some dick outlines because I don't I don't even want to see what's happening with women and I'm a woman you know like that to me is like it just makes me sad that little girls are watching this and they're like oh yeah you know like if I you know and I'm like okay I'm not your parent and I really shouldn't care but like also like in society it's like I don't know I think maybe I'm just modest and maybe I need to get to a point where I'm just okay with these things because everybody else seems to be okay with it but that was a big reason why I stopped modeling you know um, I wasn't getting like a whole bunch of jobs you know what I'm saying like I was getting booked but like with urban modeling urban modeling might as well just call it like I guess it's mod urban but it's more like the black side of things you know what I'm saying like videos and um, black tend to be like black magazines like essence and upscale and like sister to sister and stuff like that um, maybe even jet um, you have stuff that has to do with like music videos like not just being the girl in the video like you know the one that's like in a thong or whatever but like you know the beauty girl or whatever and then you have like you have other you know things that are with traditional modeling but then when you go to traditional modeling like agencies like Ford and Wilhelmina um, and all of those types of agencies that tends to be um, when you have like really big size restrictions like that's why I say like the black side doesn't tend to have the side restriction size restrictions but they have like a totally different you know set of clients like you have like back in the day when I was doing it it was like a Nietzsche and um, like maybe uh, FUBU um, Apple Bottom um, I guess maybe Beyonce's line stuff like that and then with the other ones you have to be like man super thin like to a degree where they told me on that side you know you either have to lose 30 pounds or gain 30 pounds and I was like 510 maybe 140 I was like a size 6 at 510 that's like the smallest I've ever been and they were telling me to lose 30 pounds from there like that that's not even physically natural for me I would have to do some shit that you know what I'm saying like that just would take me into a completely different place that I've never gone to before like the furthest that I've ever gone with dieting was when I graduated school um I had time left on my lease before I had to like leave my apartment at my university to move to Atlanta um, or move just you know out you know I graduated but you know the campus 
my lease lasted longer than after I graduated. You know, I think I graduated in June and my lease expired like in August. So I had like a summer where I wasn't in school. There was nobody on campus and I just spent all my days at the gym and I would spend three hours a day at the gym almost every day and um, I took diet pills. This is when Exenadrin was on the market. It got taken off the market because cats would pop like nine of them and then wind up dead. But I always took them, you know, just by the directions. And this was Exenadrin when it was strong. This is Exenadrin in the early 2000s. Not when they changed the recipe or the ingredients. And I lost like 30 pounds that summer. That was with diet pills and working out three hours every day you know and eating like two meals a day maybe three but all healthy really relatively small meals and i only got down to a size six and then they would tell me that i would need to lose 30 pounds like that would have been crazy little like I didn't even I didn't even try and then I was like well I don't feel like gaining weight I could do I could do it now for sure <laughs> the the weight gain part I've I've mastered that you know <laughs> but <laughs> but um you know like I, I wasn't into that so but um but with the other side you know in Atlanta that's when like the hip hop industry was really like booming, you know. Um, Puff Daddy had back day, you know, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, whatever. Um, he had a restaurant called Justin's in New York City, and he had one in Atlanta. And like all the black elite of Atlanta would be there, and you know, stuff was just jumping, you know, back then, jumping, <laughs> even back then, lingo, lingo that I'm using. Um, you know but stuff was popping off for sure like you know he also opened a club called the compound outcast had um what was it oh gosh dungeon family outcast you know they had their basically they had their um studio down here and dallas austin another producer had their studio 112 was doing well a lot of atlanta artists that was when usher went like international um i think brandy and monica were still doing a lot you had like a lot of artists here in atlanta so everything like art music um film hadn't started yet acting didn't start quite yet at that time here it was more like music and modeling and people were doing like for real modeling you know it wasn't just like you had the the gentlemen's magazines where it's like girls with their asses out in a bikini you know and that's when I kind of drew the line like I had this one I started getting booked for these gigs and I would get there and the wardrobe would be like like one was like a genie and I had like a bra and like see-through pants with like panties or something underneath and I just left the job I was I called my I called my manager and I was like I can't work this and then I had another set that I wa walked off of it was for um, a rims magazine dub was really big here BMI was really big here like that's another um, record label but I think they had some other things happening <laughs> so <laughs> they had issues but um that's cool that's just how it goes but dub magazine was really big here and that's when like dub rims were really like coming onto the scene and the car industry but you know they wanted me to take pictures by a rim and a bathing suit and i told myself well, i was like okay i'll try it out you know and here i am in this bathing suit and there wasn't a lot of people on set it wasn't disrespectful but I just felt so stupid. And they were telling me how to do stuff. And I was like, I'm fucking sitting next to a rim for a car. It's not even on the car. And I'm just this girl in a bathing suit. It just got stupid. And, you know, I was in a national publication. You know, Center, 
spread and it was you know fully dressed for a designer and it was like for pregnancy you know so I had a fake belly on and you know and it was like a national magazine you know but I never got paid you know and it was just little things like that um that just started getting to me and then with other parts of the modeling industry it just was I just ran into stupidity you know like and then the competition with the girls and then you see the same girls and then the videos and uh, like I got I got cast for some stuff and it was cool like a lot of the time but for the most part I was just done I was just like man this thing is stupid and I reached the same kind of conclusion in Los Angeles I thought I was gonna be acting and I, you know I remember first getting to Los Angeles this scout you know a manager like scout you know set me up with um, an interview for the biggest commercial agency in Los Angeles actually like the biggest and I was like cool you know I'm gonna make it but I didn't know how to read for commercials like I had never I had had one acting class before like I took some classes in Atlanta before I moved to Los Angeles and so I didn't know how to read so I understood why I didn't get that but then after that like trying to join the union it's just sucking up to PAs on sets you know you go work these sets and you need these union vouchers and there's just so much work you know and red tape to get through and I can see why they start fucking and sucking dick and stuff like that because it's like they want you to jump through all these hoops when you know you're putting in yourself into this realm like either you're special or you're not and so you know if you want me to do all this legwork like if you want to cast me then just cast me but I never got union vouchers and I'm over here working all these sets like Superman and what is it um bucket list and i've worked a lot of good sets i was on Grey's anatomy for like a long time and 24 like featured extra these are really little roles but it was really cool to work on these sets and that's when i thought like okay i would want to direct because i could put together this production but then it just you know i tried joining the writers guild and it was just they want you to do what they want you to do to join their club and that's cool I understand but I wasn't that interested in joining the good old boys club that I would have to follow these same rules because then you start getting into that Weinstein shit you start getting in and, and it's not just him and it's not just sexual stuff it's like they have this protocol out there that they want you to follow it's almost like you know joining a fraternity or sorority oh you want to be a part of this organization well you got to learn our shit you got to do stuff our way you got to get hazed by us you know and then we'll think about it we'll call you later and i just wasn't into it you know and especially when you see a whole bunch of like nonsense going on it's like i'm gonna you want me to do these things for nonsense and i never did anything sexual i never was asked to do anything sexual um, at least not that I knew of, you know, I'm kind of oblivious when it comes to stuff like that sometimes, but, um, I think I need to wrap up my video. <laughs> I'm like going on, but yeah, like Los Angeles, you know, I just didn't feel like it, but I thought joining the writer's guild was going to be it, but it just never, I never wanted any of that, that badly, you know, maybe that's what it is. Maybe if I wanted it that badly, then I would have done it. But one thing I've always wanted was art. One thing that I've always, that I really wanted was tattooing. Well, that I really want is tattooing. I think now that I'm in kind of like a hiatus with tattooing, I'm kind of like, mm, you know, but that's one thing that I, I'm working for and that I'll never stop working for. I don't have that drive in me to go back to LA or go over to Atlanta and try to act. I enjoy acting, I'm not a good actor. <laughs> I did get cast for a feature like I was the star of one full-length movie and that was very cool um, I've done like commercials and I've had like feature stuff like where I was like the principal I've had my little moments nothing that big you know but I just I touched the edges of the industry a few times and it's real cool but I don't have that love you know that I want that at all so but I do enjoy watching the productions like Game of Thrones and stuff to see what those people are doing on these sets. Because I have a huge respect for like flying to these beautiful places like in Ireland and shit 
to go take something where there's no outlets on you're running on batteries in the middle of wherever and you're filming this like majestic scene with like a thousand horses like that's very cool so I'm gonna end there because I'm gonna go on like forever I was thinking about stopping like 40 minutes ago <laughs> that's how I am but anyway um huh, yeah LA man <laughs> it's very cool so um mm -hmm. I'll see you the next time Bye.